Well, I was in fact going to invite you to all replenish your glasses now because I'm going to be doing a couple of toasts in a few minutes, so please make sure that you talk up. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Roxana Joseph's, uh, well, one of Joseph's younger sisters, and unconventionally uh, his best man. A few things <laughs> unconventional about this speech is that I saw how long Joseph's and Joe's were last night, so I had to write an extra five paragraphs. <laughs> Um, other things when I've been uh, told that it's unconventional to be Joseph's best man, I think that any of you that either know me, Sally, or both of us will realise that Joseph was actually trying to protect Sally and her hen do and took a bullet for the team. <laughs> it ended up with Joseph suffering for a number of days afterwards oh. rather than Sally having to do the number of shots that we did on Joseph's tag team. <laughs> Joseph, are you accustomed to pub golf? We played at Drunk in drinks, uh, Joseph Stag. We only got up to the ST and then had to go home at 8 30 because everyone was going to and we can't get letters in anymore. <laughs> I can't reveal what happened after that, but from the voicemails and text messages that both Sally and my sister Tamsin received, it went on quite a bit further. <laughs> Um, Sally and Joseph are in very good company getting married on 11-11-11. There have been 50 marriages in Gretna Green in Scotland today, compared to their usual 12, which they do on uh, Friday in November. And uh, in India, 11-11-11 is auspicious, I've had to practice saying it, <laughs> with, um, with having a successful marriage and thousands of couples have registered and I'm, while no religion or thoughts of this sort of thing have fallen in this marriage, I'm sure that you will have just as privileged and lovely a marriage as everyone else who's getting married today. Uh, also, this well known spoon bending uh, magician or psychic Yuri Geller believes that this date will in fact unlock all the secrets of the universe. Excellent. I've yet to be proven on that. <laughs> He's got five hours. Uh, other things which uh, happened on 11-11, not 11-11-11, is that NASA launched Gemini 12, and I can't write which year this actually happened in on my car, uh, which was a mission which saw Bud Aldrin photograph the star fields and do a 22-minute tethered uh, space walk, the most famous one that you will often see video footage of. Now, the reason why I found this quite interesting was not only that Sally's a scientist, but there's many things that when Joseph and Sally come to settle in Australia will see different, and the night sky being in the southern hemisphere will be one of them. Now, there's going to be a lot of other things, food, the seasons, the wrong way around, animals, and... They all walk in their hands. Well, snowmen in summer and the beach at Christmas. And if Joseph doesn't behave like the last time we went to Australia, all fit in fine. He was a bit conspicuous going around doing Simpsons jokes with a knife and and I'll pull out a cat water, which I think those of you that have seen the Simpsons will make up. If you didn't stop, stop doing those and mentioning Crocodile Dundee and Steve Irving, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we will miss them both terribly and it's been lovely to have them here and to share this with them. Uh, if you're anything like me and my sister Tamsin, you're thinking, right, cheap holiday. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll really enjoy visiting them and their family in their new location. Uh, the other thing that Joseph will have to get used to, which he didn't quite manage to get the hang of when we were in Australia, is the sunburn. I have not seen anyone with third degree burns from the sun before. <laughs> Sally's capable hands on sure will uh, Another thing which is uh, associated with November 11th is Remembrance Day. And while it's to remember people that have lost their lives serving in the wars for us, there's a number of people who couldn't be here today, including uh, Sally's grandfather, Joseph, uh, my mother's parents, Hazel and John, who have all died in recent years. But those who are still alive and can't make it is uh, Sally's grandmother, Denise, and uh, Martin's and my grandparents, uh, Pam and Vic. So my first toast to them, along with all of the other people that couldn't be here today, is to remember the people that aren't here. Absolutely.
Well, there is a note from one of Joseph's friends in Australia who couldn't be here, uh, who assures you that he'll have another Catalina wine mixer for you as soon as you arrive on the ground. If any of you don't understand that reference, please watch the film Step Brothers and you'll understand. Uh, the second toast is to the lovely people that have actually given us these two individuals, and as has already been thanking Joseph and Joe's speech, I'd like you to raise your glasses for Martin, Barbara and Joe. Without them, they wouldn't have been born, but they've also <laughs> helped for a lot about getting everything ready today and done a brilliant job of it, so to the parents. Yes. <laughs> 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 Table at home. Uh, my last post is of course for the lovely bride and groom. Firstly, I'd like to say, Sally, you look beautiful today and we're so happy to have you joining our family. You've just been lovely to know and while it's only been a short time and I know you're moving to the other side of the planet, <laughs> I'll still expect a full English in the morning. <laughs> Music a couple together is brilliant, you can see how much that you love each other and it, it's slightly sickening me being <laughs> so, uh, you bring out the best in each other and I wish you the world of happiness. We're so happy to have you in our family and I couldn't think of anyone better to keep you in check while <laughs> keeping Australia. So my final toast and the final toast for the evening is to the bride and groom. Please stand. To the bride and groom. To the bride and groom. Thank <laughs> you.